Today, we're looking at how to do this really cool paper fold-out technique with literally any graphic you want to use. And yeah, even footage. And best of all, I'm going to show you how to do this with three different techniques and one where it doesn't matter what editing software you use. So my DaVinci Resolve guys, I got you. So first off, I just want to say welcome to all the new subscribers here. It's been awesome chatting with you in the comments and I'm so glad to have you here. Secondly, a quick little update on my previous video. One of you legends pointed out that the font that Ali uses to achieve this effect is actually called the Nitty Typewriter Cameo font and it was actually in Adobe fonts. So pretty easy to get. And thirdly, another one of you legends pointed out that the way Ali actually does his paper unfolding techniques is through a plugin that you can buy from Envato, specifically the Collage Pack by Zerto Studio, which coincidentally leads us into level one, the easiest way to achieve the paper unfolding technique using a plugin. So the best plugin I found was the same that Ali uses, the Collage Pack by Zodo Studio. I also tried out the Collage Kit Constructor, but it only had three templates for folding out your own graphic. And I think the Collage Pack plugin looks more realistic and also comes with more options. Now what's great about this plugin is on top of all the pre-made graphics that it comes with, you can also place your own graphic into it and it folds out for you with 13 different templates. And it's super easy to use. All you need to do is purchase and install all the files. They have instructions on how to do this included in their download files. I had no real problems with this. But once it's installed, you open up After Effects and you have the Atom X window there where you can see all of these paper folder assets. And all we need to do is go to this little tab where it says Collage Picture and select one of these presets. Find the one you like and just click Apply. This will then load in a new composition into your After Effects project. And all we need to do to change our image here is just double click on this pre-comp, which will open up a control layer and a media layer. Double click on the media layer, then drag in your graphic of choice. Now you'll have to adjust the size of a lot of things and make sure it fits within this little box. But once that's done, you'll see that whatever you've put in there will now fold out in your main composition. It's that easy. And to speed up how fast or slow you want the paper unfold to be, you can just drag these little cool sliders on this layer. This feature is so cool. But now we move on to level two, which looks even better. So for this level, we're gonna be doing a stop motion animation of a real printout of your graphic. I know, gross. But it does give you the most customization and as you can see, looks really good. However, it does take the most amount of time and you have to do it for every graphic that you print out, which means you're absolutely gonna fly through printer ink, meaning that $45 pack that you could buy and do really, really quickly is actually probably gonna be cheaper in the long term than doing this technique. But I still wanna show you how to do this because it's a lot of fun. So of course you need to first print out your graphic and then also cut it out. Now, depending on the look you wanna go, you can have a little bit of a stroke added to it or you can cut right next to the graphic so it's nice, clean, and crisp. Then the next step is to set up an overhead camera rig. Now you can do this a million different ways. You can DIY it like Casey Neistat. You can use a professional overhead camera rig, or you can also use something like this, which is a Manfrotto adjustable arm that has a camera attachment. You can put lights onto this thing, you can clamp it to your desk and have a really simple overhead rig. I've had this for several years and it works really, really well. So once you have that set up, you wanna make sure that your desk is a high contrast to the graphic that you're gonna be folding up. So for instance, my red shoe graphic here will work well on a white background, but if you have a white graphic, maybe use a different colored surface. And if you wanna be extra cheeky, you can use a green screen, which means you can use a green screen remover in an editing software to make this job really, really easy. Nice. So all you wanna do is place your graphic on the table pin it down to a specific spot. For this, I use a little bit of blue tack, stick it on the back of the graphic and place it on my table. And then you simply take incremental photos, making a fold in the paper each time. And you keep doing this until it becomes a small little ball. Generally, I try to complete this with three to six folds. And as you're doing this, you kind of want to imagine how this is going to look playing back. So basically, this folding in of the paper is the reverse of how it's going to play in our final animation. So you want to think, how is it gonna look with the paper folding out like this? Could I do a different cool technique which would make it look really cool with the final animation? If you have really big jumps from each fold, so they're huge folds, it's gonna be a much harsher animation versus a bunch of smaller ones that are more subtle. So whatever style you're going for, you can really control it here. Now, once you have those photos, depending on the setup that you use, so if you use a green screen, you can just put it straight into your editing software and use a green screen remover to get rid of all the backgrounds and just have that graphic paper. Or you can drag it into a program like Photoshop and use the object selection tool or the pen tool to mask out each of these images. So you just have that graphic layer folding in. Once we have that background removed using either technique, drag it into your editing software 
and just stagger the starting times of each of those clips, starting from the scrunched up ball into the fully revealed graphic by about a couple of frames. Now the beauty of this is you can completely customize how fast it goes. If you want it to be a faster fold out, just adjust the time between each of those images. Now because it's a printout, depending on your printer, Bruh. the graphics quality is gonna be a little bit reduced and it might be a bit washed out. So you can also do a little bit of color correction here, adjusting the curves, maybe adding in a bit more contrast, some saturation to really make these images pop. And once you do it on one of these layers, you can just simply copy and paste it onto all the others. And if we play it back, you'll see that my graphic now folds out really cool. Now, if I wanted to fold back in, just simply stagger the ending position of each of those clips. Now that actually took a lot of effort to create that. And if I was gonna do this for every new graphic I wanted to add into a video, I'm gonna spend a lot of time, which I do not have, creating these. So how can I avoid that and do this the smart way? Well. Welcome to level three. So now we're gonna turn things up and create an After Effects template much like the first plugin that we used, but in my opinion, a little bit nicer and exactly how you want it. But sadly, with that niceness comes blood, sweat, and tears. Lots of tears. So let's get into it. The first step is we need to create a paper fold out much like the second level, but this time with a blank piece of paper. Now this could be a white piece of paper, some newspaper, or even a colored piece of paper. You can use whatever you want and achieve different looks. For this, I'm using a white piece of A4 paper and I start by scrunching it up a little bit and then folding it back out. What this does is it provides a bit of texture that we can apply to our graphics once the fold out is complete. And you can see the difference here, it just makes it look like paper in the end result. So just like the steps in level two, I folded in this white piece of paper until I had a scrunched up ball. And with those photos, I took them into Photoshop. And this time I did opt for the pen tool to make sure that all the cutouts were really precise. Because if we do this correctly once and have a really good result, we can use it on hundreds, of, if not thousands of assets in the future and have something that looks perfect each time. Now you wanna set up a new project and composition within After Effects. And I made sure mine was a 4K resolution, which means I can apply it to a bunch of different projects and have really high res foldouts. For the duration, I opted for five seconds. And just like level two, we're gonna drag in all those images and stagger the starting points so we have a nice foldout of this white paper. Selecting all of these layers, scale them down so they fit within the composition window. And you'll have something that looks like this. Now holding down shift, select all of those layers and then right click and select pre-compose. Give it the name paper fold out and press okay. Now go grab a graphic that you wanna fold out. At this point, it can be anything and we're gonna set it up so we can change it to be whatever we want in the future. Drag that into your composition and adjust the scale and position so it covers most of the paper. But importantly, doesn't go beyond the paper. Again, right click on this layer and pre-compose it, this time calling it something like image or image placement. Then we're gonna make it so the paper fold out matches the shape of any graphic that we drag in here. Because at the moment, it's still that nice rectangular shape we want it to be, in this case, the shape of a sneaker. So duplicate your image layer by pressing Control D and label it Image Mask. Then on the paper foldout layer, go to the track mat selection. If you don't see that, click this little button here for toggling switches and modes. Click on No Mat and select Image Mask. Now, if we turn off our image layer, we can now see that the paper foldout will fold out in the shape of our sneaker. Also, in case you wanna move around the size and position of your image at this point, make sure you parent the image mask to the original image layer. And you can do that by dragging from this little symbol here, which is the pick whip icon, and dragging that to the image layer. So now when we move around the image layer, the image mask will also move, which is very important. And the beautiful thing is, if we double click on the image pre-comp, it's gonna open that composition, and if we change the graphic within that, and go back to our main one, you're gonna see that it's gonna to unfold to any shape that we put in there. Pretty cool, but now we need to make the actual image unfold like this. So you wanna start by actually making this image layer invisible. So go to opacity and put that to zero. Now you wanna go through your composition now and drag your playhead through until the paper fold shows some part of the inside of the paper. So something like this little spot here. This would be the point where you would start to see the image if it was unfolding naturally. So for this part, I actually did something a little different to what I'm about to show you. So I originally tell you to create a mask on the image layer, but doing that won't allow us the freedom to move around our graphic in the end like this. So follow the same steps, but instead create a new solid layer and create the masks on that. Now back to the tutorial. So now with the image layer selected, go up and grab the pen tool and I want you to create a mask 
following the outline of this little part inside the paper fold out. You can do this by just clicking on little points and if there's curves, you can drag it out, which gives you these little handles to adjust the curvature of these lines. And if there's a sharp point after a curve, you can also hold down Alt and grab one of these handles and move it around so you have a curve going into a sharp point. Just a useful tip for masking. And once you have that first mask done, go to the image layer and find the mask properties. And next to where it says mask path, click this little stopwatch icon, which is gonna create a keyframe. Now we just need to move forward in our composition until the next unfold happens and adjust the mask path. Now, if you can't select these points, which happens a lot admittedly, just go into the image layer and click on the mask, not mask path, click on mask. And that should allow you to then select the layers. It's a weird little glitch that happens in After Effects. I don't know why, maybe some of you guys could enlighten me, but that workaround will work. So you just wanna grab these little points and adjust them so it follows the inside of that paper fold. Now using the pen tool, you can also add in new points. Again, you can drag them out to add curvature, but importantly, you don't want to delete points because that will remove them from the previous mask. So you just wanna repeat this process, going to each point within the fold and adjusting the mask so it's showing the inside of the paper. And eventually you'll get to the point where the mask is simply covering the entirety of the paper. But if I play this back now, you'll see that the mask adjusts smoothly from each of these shapes, which really doesn't match the paper fold out. So to adjust this, make sure first that each of the keyframes of those mask shapes lines up with the point where the paper unfolds. Then select all of those keyframes, right click and select toggle hold keyframes. And just like that, the mask path is gonna follow the paper fold out exactly. And then we can go back to the opacity and turn that back to 100. So you'll see that our graphic will appear as the paper folds out, giving a sort of border, which looks really cool and really natural. And again, you can do this with different colored paper. You can do this with newspaper, things with uh, more texture to it, and it looks really cool. But speaking of texture, let's now add a little bit of that to our graphics. So once it folds out, it looks a bit more like paper and not like a digital graphic. So simply duplicate the paper fold out, making sure that the track mat is still selected as that image mask. Drag it above your image layer and then drag on the levels effect. Play around with these sliders until you get a nice contrast showing all the shadows and bumps within that paper, which you should have if you scrunch it up nicely. Then go into the blending mode and select multiply. And instantly you're gonna see that it adds texture to our graphic and also makes the overall thing pop a little bit better. And then select all of these layers, right click and pre-compose it, this time selecting the second option and giving it a descriptive name. Something like white paper fold out template. And now I can use this in any project I want, whether it be in Premiere Pro or in After Effects. Just save a new copy each time you wanna change the graphic. And just for a little refresher, if you do wanna change the graphic, just double click on each of the pre-compositions. So you double click on this first one, it'll open up all those other layers, and then you just double click on the image layer and put in whatever you want. Again, you could even put in footage. Now I do know that there's a question that you have because it's a question that I had. How do we do a paper fold out transition with this effect. Well, there's an easy way and there's a hard way to do it. The hard way would be to go in and actually animate this in within the first composition. So staggering the paper fold going out, having the mask keyframes follow that paper fold out in our final composition, which is actually easy to do because you can just copy the keyframes from before and paste them in line with the paper fold out. But there's actually an easier way. On our final composition, right click on that and select time and enable time remapping. This will show you two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end. Now I want you to make one right in the middle and you can do that by pressing this little keyframe icon. Then go to the end one and delete it. And we're gonna replace that with the first one. So select that, copy it and paste it where the end one was. So essentially what this is doing is it's taking that first point in time, going through, at the halfway point, it's just reversing it and going back to where it started. And that, my friends, is it. Let me know which technique you think looks the best, which one you're gonna try or use in the future, whether it be that plugin, whether you're gonna make your own. I personally like the hardest ones because I get a sense of pride from that. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I love doing this stuff. But I hope you found all of this useful and I'll include all the links to everything down below in the description, including my paper textures, which you can play around with. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, you're only one video video away.